Hey y'all, I'm Mickey Gousset. In today's video, we're diving deep into a powerful feature of GitHub Actions, matrix jobs. Now, whether you're testing across multiple versions of Node.js, deploying to different operating systems, or just optimizing your CI pipeline, matrix jobs can save you time and simplify your workflows. Now, matrix jobs let you run a single job configuration with multiple combinations of variables, such as operating systems, programming language versions, or environment configs. GitHub then spins up a separate job for each combination in parallel if you have enough runners. For example, with this particular matrix YAML snippet, this would split into four different jobs. One that was Ubuntu with node 14, one that was Ubuntu with Node 16, one that was Windows with Node 14, and one that was Windows with Node 16. Now matrix jobs are great when you need to run the same test or deployment logic across many environments. For example, maybe you need to do cross browser or OS testing. The one I see the most is multi-language version continuous integration type deals like Node.js or Python, you need to test different versions of those. Also testing apps in different configurations is another reason why a matrix job may come in handy. Now by the same token, there are going to be times when you really don't want to use a matrix job. So there are certain tasks that they are not ideal for, such as tasks with complex dependencies between steps or where you want to avoid the cost from running unnecessary parallel jobs. For example, if job B depends on the results of job A across all OS versions, a matrix is not going to be helpful here. You're going to have to come up with a different way to construct your workflow at that point. Matrix jobs are most useful when the task can be truly parallel and independent. So if you have conditional steps across jobs or dependencies, you should consider doing some sort of custom job flow instead. Okay, so let's go through a real world example. So here we are in my test repository. So at github.com slash DevOps Elvis, YouTube GitHub Actions Matrix Jobs Demo. And this is a public repo, you have access to this repo. Now this repository is a very simple Node.js app. And what we want to do, so we have some source code for our little application here, and we have a couple of different tests for our application. So what we want to do is create some GitHub Action workflows. Now the first workflow we want to create is one that's going to test our application over two different operating systems and two different versions of Node. So we're going to do that using a matrix. So if we go into my GitHub workflows folder and we go into the matrix node example, then here we have a workflow and this workflow has a display name of node test. We're triggering this workflow manually. And then here's where the magic starts to happen. So what we're gonna do is define a, well, let's step up back for a second. So what do we need this job to actually do for us? Well, we need to check out our code. We need to set up a version of node and then we need to run npm install and npm test. Now we need to do that for each operating system and each version of node that we want to test. So we could create four different jobs, one for Linux, one for Windows, one for node 14, one for node 16. But instead, what we can do is use a matrix where we only have one job and then the matrix will split it off over all our different values. So what we've got here is one job called test. Now we'll come back to the runs on statement here in just a moment, but this is where the power is. So we're defining a strategy and by defining a strategy to do that, you say strategy, 
then we say the keyword matrix, then we say whatever values we're wanting to, to use as part of our matrix. So in this case, I've got two values that I want to use as part of my matrix. I want to um, specify an operating system. So I created one called OS and I'm passing in two operating systems, Ubuntu and Windows Latest. And I created one called Node and I wanna test on Node 14 and Node 16. So ultimately what I want is to test Node 14 on Ubuntu Latest, Node 16 on Ubuntu Latest, Node 14 on Windows Latest, and node 16 on Windows latest. Because I'm defining this strategy, this matrix strategy in this job, it's going to split this job off onto, into those, into four jobs now to handle what I've said in my matrix. Now, the way you access the values that are being used in the matrix, look at the runs on command. I say dollar sign curly brace, curly brace, matrix, which is right there. OS and down here where I'm setting up node, I say dollar sign curly brace, curly brace matrix dot node. So what's going to happen is it's going to create all the different combinations of the matrix that it can. In this case, the number of combinations would be four. So if we come over to actions and we select matrix node test, and we kick this off. Then what you're gonna see when we go into it is that because I'm using hosted runners and I have enough runners, it spins up four jobs. Now each job has a, a, a name of test because that's the, the name of the job. And then in parentheses, it has the values for the matrix. So this is the job running on Ubuntu 14. This is the job running on Ubuntu 16. And then here's the Windows 14 and the Windows 16. And we can see that each job sets up node, runs the NPM install, runs NPM test. Sets up node, runs NPM install, NPM test. On the Windows machine, sets up node, runs NPM install, NPM test. But the beauty of it is I only had to create the job one time it reuses these steps by splitting off into different combinations based off this matrix. Okay, so that's using a basic matrix. But there's some other ways you can use this as well. For example, one of the options you have in order to do this is you can exclude certain combinations. So for example, Here's the exact same file, just with a different matrix combination. So in this matrix combination, I've listed Ubuntu and Windows and Node 14 and 16, but I don't want to run this on Windows with Node 16. So I use the exclude keyword. So instead of spinning up four different jobs, it's gonna only spin up three because it's not going to spin up a Windows 16 because I excluded it. So if we come over to actions and we go to the exclude and we run this workflow. Then you can see we only have three. There it is. Only have three jobs the two Ubuntu jobs and the Windows 14 job because it did it excluded the Windows 16 job so it did not run the Windows 16 job. Now, what if I want to only include certain combinations? For example, I don't want to do a full cross product so all of Ubuntu, all of Windows over all the different node versions. I only want to test specific combinations. For example, I want to test node on Ubuntu, I want to test Node 16 on Ubuntu, and I want to test Node 14 on Windows. You can do that as well. So if we go back to our workflows, and we go to our include, again, same job steps, but the difference is how we specify this matrix strategy. 
This time, we say strategy matrix, and we just specify include. And then we specify the OS and the node that we want to include. So in this case, we're using all the same steps, but we should only spin up two different jobs. So let's go check that out. Let's go to actions, include. We'll run this action. And we should see that it only spins up two jobs because we only included two jobs. Now, the final matrix scenario I want to show you, I think it's a little cool. It's a little mind bendy, but it's also a little cool. And by that, what I mean is dynamic matrices. So for more dynamic scenarios, say for example, you're fetching environments from an API, you can define your matrix dynamically using the from JSON function. So first thing you'll notice about this is we've got two jobs. The first job is basically generating all the different matrix is, is going to simulate doing that API call where it goes out and gets all the information that I need to populate the matrix for the second job. So we call this first job generate. What this job is going to do is it's, it's going to create an output variable from called matrix or output variable from the job called matrix. So we have this one step called set. And in that step, we are saying that a key value pair, the key matrix equals this JSON. And if you look at this JSON, what it's doing is we're saying OS colon and then Ubuntu latest and Windows latest. So that's the same thing as say what we wrote over here when we wrote OS, Ubuntu latest, and Windows latest. We're just simulating that we've gone off somewhere, calculated all this up, figured out what we need, and now we're setting it equal to a key value pair called matrix, and we pipe that into the dollar sign GitHub output. By doing this, this creates a step output variable from this ID called set. So if we go to steps, set, outputs matrix it's going to take this value and set it into the job output variable so at this point this job output variable equals this string that's what it equals so then we go to the build job it needs the generate to finish successfully so the generate has to run successfully and then you'll notice that we have a strategy matrix section but in this strategy matrix section, we are saying dollar sign curly brace, curly brace, go to the generate job, get the output from it that was the matrix value, which is here, which is this string, and run the from JSON against that string. So by taking that string and running the from JSON from it, it puts it in the right format where this matrix keyword is now set up correctly with a sub keyword called OS with two values, Ubuntu latest and Windows latest. And notice then we still have our runs on, which is using the matrix.os, which is using the value that it gets from here. And then all we're doing here is just, we're doing an output of, of just echoing out to show you that we're running on the two different, or to show you which OS we're running on. Now, if we take this and we go to actions and we go to dynamic and we execute this workflow, then you can see we've got generate needs to run. And then once generate runs and returns back Ubuntu latest and Windows latest, it spins up two jobs, one on Ubuntu and run one on Windows. So this allows us to have an API driven almost, you know, 
build or continuous integration with external configuration flexibility because we can go off to some other system pull back what we need to then create the matrix dynamically to then run our jobs against that matrix okay now before we wrap up here's a few best practices and gotchas to keep in mind avoid huge matrices GitHub has a max limit of 256 jobs that it can spawn, so you don't want to go over that. Make sure you use the fail fast keyword and set it to false to prevent canceling other jobs that may have been spun up because of a particular job failed. This is super important. Be mindful of billing, especially if you're using GitHub hosted runners and if you're spawning multiple jobs, which means it's going to be spawning on multiple runners, you can run up a bill pretty quick. And finally, make sure you name your jobs clearly when you're using a more complex matrix so it makes sense what each job is doing. Matrix jobs are one of the most efficient tools for testing and deploying across environments. Once you master them, you will wonder how you lived without them. Now, if you found this video helpful, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Every little bit helps to get me out in front of more people. Also, links to all the demo code are in the description below. Thanks for watching.